returning family and friends of our own Marty Mallet. I thank you for being here and the family thanks you for being here as well. Uh, we've had a graveside uh, ceremony, but this is the time when we will uh, celebrate and give thanksgiving for the life of Martha Mallet, better known to all of us as Marty. And thank God for the ways that she has left her spirit and left her being and made an imprint on us here at First Congregational and in the family and with her friends. Uh, my name is Valerie Jackson and I'm a member here. And uh, no, I was not supposed to officiate this morning, but uh, Pastor Mia White has COVID and she has asthma, so she has a very bad case of it. But um, uh, I am so happy to be here with you and uh, especially in this space, space this morning, do you know that you are the inaugural group for this space? We just renovated and, and the construction workers were saying, well, when do we need to be ready? And, and we set the deadline for the 14th of September. We said there's something special going on on the 14th of September. So uh, how do you like it? Is it pleasing? Okay. So let us do a little uh, housekeeping first. Uh, the restrooms are under renovation on this floor that are down the hall. So there is a restroom that is out in the vestibule. Just go out this side door over here and there's a room. Go into that room and there's a restroom there. There are also restrooms downstairs if you take the elevator down to the basement. In the fellowship hall, there's also a restroom there. So, and that one is uh, 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 handicap serviceable. So uh, just so you know where the restrooms are, we will immediately following this, this uh, uh, I should say Thanksgiving or celebration, we will be upstairs in the, uh, uh, what do we call it? We don't call it the fellowship hall. Social hall. We will be upstairs in the social hall and we can continue to talk about who Marty was and how she affected us and socialize with one another and have a little snack or something to eat. But let us start this um, ceremony or this celebration off with the greeting. Um, I just want to say that Marty wrote this herself and she uh, uh, passed it on to the pastor what she wanted to do. So her handprints and, and her being, or I, I, I feel like her spirit is, is all over these pages, and I'm grateful for that. But this is the greeting, and, and uh, as I start here, listen carefully, you who have come here today. This is a place where the Creator has often been known to speak to people. This is a place where the God of Earth and nature has often known to comfort people. This is a place where many times in the past, the pain of grief has been gently soothed, where hurting hearts have been healed and made whole again, and where restless thoughts and anxious imaginings have been calmed and stilled and taken away. For here is where people come together in community to dry each other's tears of disappointment and to support those among us who are most unhappy, to mend the hurt and brokenness of those who experience the keenest and the strongest sense of loss. This then is the right place, the right place for us today, for Marty has died, and for those who were closest to her and who loved her the most, the disappointment must run deep. And there is much sadness and grief, but we are here too to express our gratitude. For on this day of all days, whatever our faith or honest lack of it, there is a part of all of us which senses and knows it is right and it is good to give thanks for a life consistently lived in glad celebration. A life marked by the closest 
and most meaningful kinds of relationships, a life in which so many friendships of death were made with folk whom she met along the way. And we give thanks too for the privilege that has been ours, been ours, been mine, of knowing Marty for the way in which she touched our lives so that in the process, our experience was all the richer and it was all the fuller and our own living made more wholesome and more complete. Amen. Would you please join me in the opening prayer? Or bow your heads, please. Almighty architect of nature, our love is like a great sea that surrounds the earth. Out of the deep, we come to float a while on its surface. We cannot comprehend its depth or tell its greatness, but we know that it never fails. The winds that blow over us are the breathing of your spirit. The sun that lights and warms us is your truth. Sometimes we sail calm seas. Now we are tossed by stormy waters on the crests of the waves of sorrow you raise. But it is your love that bears us up. And when we pass into the deep again, the waters of your love encompass and enfold us. And you assure us that we will hear the whisper of your spirit and will find comfort in your boundless love. And to that we say, amen. amen. Now we have an anthem by our choir. The morning has broken. scripture that Marty wanted you to hear this morning comes from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, and it reads, Now faith, hope, and love remain, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Amen. Um, now we will have words of remembrance from Marty's sister, uh, Shirley Beald. And Shirley, you may come up here if you like, or I have a hand mic as well if you'd like that with one. Marty is my baby sister, 10 years younger than me. My older sister and I were excited when she was born. 
We helped with her care, changing diapers, feeding, and playing with her. She had a favorite stuffed animal, Fufu, that went everywhere with her and even got new ears and new skin when he got worn out. Our family moved from New Jersey to Wisconsin when she was three. About that time, she planted a silver maple from a seed in our backyard, which grew to be a very large tree. As a preschooler, she had a lot of dolls, and she would line them up in her room to teach school. She always liked horses and assembled various model horses as a child. In her early teen years, Dad bought her a real horse as, as an incentive for her to spend time at their summer home in southern Missouri. She enjoyed riding the horse and going to horse shows. Eventually, the horse moved back to Wisconsin with her. Marty has always been very friendly and outgoing. She has maintained many lifelong friends that she met in her childhood or youth in Madison, Wisconsin. She was able to make a visit to Wisconsin to say goodbye to her friends just before she went into hospice care. <coughs> Marty earned her degree in wildlife ecology at the University of Wisconsin and had a few wildlife related jobs and adventures in the subsequent years. In the early 1990s, she came to St. Louis for an internship at the World Bird Sanctuary. Since I was a single parent at that time, she stayed with me and helped care for my two school-aged sons. She met her future husband, Mike, who is a volunteer at the World Bird Sanctuary. They both like birds and bird watching. I was a bridesmaid at their wedding in 1994, and the ring bearer was a barn owl. Now the owl was up in the balcony and Mike had his uh, hand out there with a the glove to, to catch the owl as it flew down with the ring, so that was uh, an interesting event. Um, after, a few year, after a few years living at a house in Dupo, Illinois, they bought a house in High Ridge, Missouri, where she lived for the rest of her life. Their house is in a beautiful wooded area and they have numerous bird feeders around the property. Marty was a very good mother to their son, Aaron, who was born in 1997. As well as bird watching, Marty and Mike enjoyed camping in their little camper, painting with watercolors and hiking. They almost made it to their 30th wedding anniversary but Marty's life was cut short by cancer. She made a good choice in marrying Mike. He has been an angel helping her through the, the past year with cancer treatments and hospice. Marty enjoyed her friends, family gatherings, church, cooking, music, and reading. She was very fond of my granddaughters and always wanted to visit and do things with them. Marty was courageous in facing the ordeal of various cancer treatments and complications in the past year. She had a strong faith and many friends and family members to support her as she faced these challenges with an upbeat attitude. When she was in hospice care at home, she said she wanted a green burial. This was not surprising since Marty was very concerned about protecting the environment. In July, we laid her body to rest in a beautiful green burial, complete with horse-drawn hearse and bagpipes in historic Bellefontaine Cemetery. Marty has passed on to heaven and is now reunited with our mother and others who have passed before her. We will all miss Marty greatly. Hymn number four in your hymnal is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. And would everyone rise and sing that hymn with us?
this week when I saw this particular scripture in the uh, program, I was not shocked. It reeks of Marty. It tells of the comforts of God along with much imagery, nature imagery. And it is the 23rd Psalm, and this is how it reads. The Lord is my shepherd, like a garden in full bloom after gentle rains. I lack nothing. Guided beside calm, shimmering lakes, where herons stand watch and sparrows drink, through fields where wildflowers sway, and skylarks sing their praises to the dawn, my soul is restored. As gently as the morning dew refreshes the earth, even when I walk through the shadow valleys where the ancient mountains tower high, I will fear no storm and no darkness, for your presence is as constant as the stars above, and your hand, like a mighty oak, holds me securely. You spread a feast before me amid the song of birds and the hum of bees, and not even the fiercest winds can shake me, for you anoint me with the fragrance of pine and cedar. My cup overflows with the sweetness of life. Surely your goodness and love will surround me like the ever-flowing rivers and the endless skies. And I will dwell in the heart of your creation for all the days of my life. And so she did. Please bow your head again in this prayer of thanksgiving. God, who is the very essence of love, even in the sadness of this day, we turn to you with hearts full of gratitude and hope Hope that now Marty's earthly journey is complete. She rests in the meadow of your peace. Beneath the canopy of stars that you have prepared, we give thanks to you, O oh God, for the gift of knowing Marty, for the many ways she shared her life with Mike and with Aaron and her sisters, Shirley and Nancy, and all her family and friends and all of creation who loved her with a depth as vast as the ocean. May the winds carry our gratitude and may her spirit find rest in the embrace of your creation. Amen. Our next hymn is number 433 in your hymnal and it's called, In the Bowl There is a Flower. Would you please rise and join us again in that hymn.
The final scripture that Marty wanted you to hear is Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, and it reads, And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the breath returns to God who gave it. Amen. At this time, there are uh, two members of the first congregational uh, congregation that Marty especially uh, asked to have words, and that is Chrissy Patterson and Melissa Wirtz. And uh, I know others want to speak and others want to, to, to share their love for Marty, and you'll have the opportunity to do that in just a few moments. But would uh, Chrissy and Melissa please come forward? And you may stand here, or you may use a uh, handheld mic. Good morning, and peace be with you. My name is Melissa Wurst, and I've been a member here and a friend of Marty and Mike and Aaron's for 20 plus years. About a week after Marty died, uh, I was, we went down to our little cabin on the river, and I was standing out on the porch and was looking at my bird feeders, and along came this lone hummingbird and had a bright red band around its throat. Well, hello, Marty. I knew you'd come back as a bird. I just wasn't sure which kind you'd come back. I texted Mike about it a little later, and he told me that he also hears her in the trees and in the wind as he's out doing his walks. And it was certainly something that she shared with all of us here, her love of birds. A couple weeks ago, we were back down at that cabin, and first thing my husband said to me when we got out of the car, he said, well, should we put the hummingbird feeders away? I said, no. Marty always said leave them out until October because those birds need their last bit of nourishment on that final migration. And every year, if you're a friend of hers on Facebook, you know that she posted every spring, keep those bird feeders clean, right? Don't put in the the red dye number two, and every September she reminded us to keep those bird feeders out until October. So while she may not be here to remind us, it's something that sticks in my head, and I say her name. So I hope there's something that you have in your heart that you remember, maybe something she said, maybe her wicked little laugh, or some, some movement that she had that will bring you peace, and say her name. May it be well with her soul. We'll miss you, Marty. Good morning. I'm Chrissy Patterson, a lifetime member of First Congregational Church. I have been asked to speak this morning by Pastor Mia and Marty. What an honor. Well, what comes to my mind when I remember Marty are her many attributes. So I decided one Sunday to ask some members of First Congregational to tell me in a few words how they remember Marty. These are the words and thoughts that I heard over and over from members here at church. Just saying Marty's name brings a smile to my face. Oh, also, colors. Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> worn because of Marty, but the colors that come to mind, purple and pink. Marty was caring, kind, passionate about many things, a lover of the outdoors, a birder. She was compassionate. She was generous, artistic, a seeker, a learner, a painter, a crocheter. I didn't know that, I was told. Willing to help others, a singer a horseback rider, intelligent, friendly, faithful, humble, committed, vulnerable, supportive, bringer of light, magical, cared about the environment and people. She had an unending commitment to be a good mother and a wonderful wife. These words about Marty are how we all felt about her. The one word that we all feel today is love. Thank 
Thank you, ladies. We will sing the hymn number eight, and, and it is praise to the living God. Do you want to stand again? Please rise. <laughs> In body or spirit. Is there anyone else um, in the congregation who has final words of remembrance for Marty? Please come forward. Good morning, I'm Tom Moore. I am uh, the youngest brother of Marty's father. Uh, my wife and I met Marty when she was three months old. Uh, we had just, I had just asked my wife to uh, get married and uh, following uh, my brother Ed, he invited us to come down and we got to meet uh, Marty then. And uh, we had, due to the, the fact that we lived in significantly different areas. We did not often see her, but we did enjoy the times we did see her. Our uh, younger daughter, I'm sorry, our older daughter particularly enjoyed, who's a couple years younger than Marty, particularly enjoyed her. And uh, the older daughter, uh, who is a uh, diplomat uh, on her first assignment in Algeria, uh, had an interesting bird that nested uh, just outside their bedroom window and sent a picture of it to Marty and got a very prompt reply. <laughs> and it was not a common hawk. Let's just leave it that way. Uh, she enjoyed Marty 
we all enjoyed the positive things there and uh, the way that she, Mike, and Aaron interacted. Good morning, folks. Um, I'm Jeff Messick, and I work at World Bird Sanctuary, where, where Marty worked for a few years. And just wanted to say a few words on behalf of all of the World Bird Sanctuary staff that got to, to know Marty and, and, and work with her. She was a, a great hard worker. She was a great educator. She did such a great program for especially, especially children. Spoke really well with children. Um, I, I heard somebody, somebody mention a hummingbird that was, uh, she, she liked hummingbirds. I also know that she really loved our golden eagle. We had a big, beautiful golden eagle that we used for education. I put mine on my phone so I wouldn't ramble or lose my way. <laughs> okay, um, this will be a little bit over a minute. Try to time it. I met Marty about 40 years ago when we both boarded our horses together at the same stable. We quickly became friends, riding our horses and especially enjoying trail rides and getting away from the barn. Um, we did all kind of outdoor activities like hiking and biking and snowing and skiing, camping. Through the years, we were allowed to do a few extended trips away. Um, Mike graciously let Marty go with me to walk Mexico with some girls one year. We got to ride horses on the beach and in the waves. Special memory there. Um, she was one of the people who introduced me to the world of birding. In many of our hikes that we would try to take, an exercise always got interrupted by a unique bird. We'd have to stop and figure out what it was. She knew quicker than I would. <laughs> uh, we spent so much time together before she moved to St. Louis that when she left, I felt lost for a couple months. I really had never had that feeling of being that close to somebody. And because of her loyalty to her friends and others, we remained close friends, long life friends. On my trips to St. Louis, we would take time to sit and relax, watching movies, enjoying chocolate, enjoying Mike's popcorn, um, to wind down a day of being outdoors. As we got older, puzzles came into the picture. And while in Madison, we spent many nights with Nancy, the master puzzler there. Um, I have one on open owl puzzle that I didn't get to do, but when, when I get to it someday, I'll remember Marty as we put it together. Maybe me and Nancy can do it together. <laughs> um, God tells us that life is just a short mist of time. He tells us that true life comes in Jesus Christ and his church, the Bride of Christ, will be gathered together. So for this short while, I will be missing Marty, but in faith, in our confidence and hope, I look forward to being with her once again and with um, glory in God's family. Till then, we'll miss you, Marty. I know we all can't speak, but there is something that we all can do. And you know how when you attend a play and the performance was just beautiful? And at the end, you give an applause. So I would like for us all to just give an applause for the life of Marty and say thank you. Thank you. There is a bomb in Gilead, and it's our uh, final hymn, number 553. You may rise in body and spirit, or spirit.
Would you remain standing for our benediction? And immediately after, we will go to the second floor to the social hall and continue to celebrate some, uh, Marty's life with the family. You are the people, by the way. May God's blessings rain down upon you and keep you safe like a meadow bathed in the gentle sun. Amen. May God's light shine upon you and warm your spirit like the morning sun upon dew-kissed leaves. Amen. And may God look upon you with kindness and give you peace like the green pastures beside still waters. Amen. Thank you.